Rick, thanks. Lovey, where have you seen the most improvement so far in camp? Well, a lot of areas. Um, you know, when you bring in a graduate transfer quarterback, you're expecting big things. Uh, Brandon Peters has been outstanding. We had most of our offensive line coming back, so we expected them to be uh, up to par. But some of the other positions, we, we haven't played, of course, it's kind of understood, we haven't played good enough defense around here in a long period of time. Linebacking crew has to step up. Adding a player like uh, Milo Eifler has helped a lot. It's the reason why Nate Hobbs represented us at the Big Ten meeting. You mentioned the defense and that it has to improve, and you've taken over coordinating on that side of the ball. What's the blueprint for getting it to where you need it to be? Well, I mean, first off, uh, you know, we've a few years ago we started a lot of guys, and they've grown up. Um, at times we look pretty good. Uh, the drop off from our front line really hurt us an awful lot. We just went back to the drawing board as much as anything. We're healthy now. We feel good about a front line guy at each position, and and it's about redemption as much as anything. We've been embarrassed by the way we, we played. No time to talk about it. Pretty soon we'll show an improved product. You've always been involved with the defense, but now there's no other defensive coordinator as an assistant coach. I know there's probably not a big difference for you, but are there subtle differences that you found? Uh, time management, of course. There's a small difference in that. I have been always involved to an extent, but now, you know, having to be on top of all the details, you know, staying in the football game, uh, there's always time to do both. You know, once the defense is out there, I'm locked in with it. Really trust what we're doing on the offensive side of the football. So it hasn't been that much of a transition. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, having a, a veteran like Rod Smith on the offensive yes. side kind of allows you to do more defensively, correct? It does. And Bob Ligashevsky, I'm going to say also. But, um, you know, offensively, we did a lot of good things last year. And um, I just feel like we can take another step with it. But uh, in order for us to take that next step, it's all about defensive football around here, and I believe we'll do it. You haven't played a game yet, but can you gauge the difference between the progress on personnel from two to three and year three to four? Yes, I, I can. There are some guys that are really, you know, I just kind of mentioned a couple guys. Overall, of course, they were older, wiser, all of that. But a player like uh, Daniel Barker, you know, we're going to, an outstanding tight end, Luke Ford, won't play for us this year. We needed someone else to really step up. Really been impressed with what a guy like Daniel Barker has been able to do. Uh, again, I mentioned some of the defensive side of the football. Ricky Smalling is healthy now, and that's the only thing that's really stopped him from playing great football. Reggie Corbin had as good a year as anyone, so we can talk on a lot of guys. Can't let you get away without talking about I was the hoping you would ask. facility <laughs> behind us. I was us. hoping I mean, you would ask. I know it hasn't been, been that long, but give us an update. How do you feel about it? Well, uh, how were the excitement uh, on our players' faces when we moved in? They didn't know that we were moving in Sunday, so early Christmas gift. Uh, we've been waiting a long time for this. Josh Whitman, a long time ago, said, that, hey, we have the worst facility pretty much in college football now. We'll have the best. That's exactly what we have, just first class with everything. We're so thankful for so many people like you that love our university, the Smith family, Stu Levin. There are so many that came and uh, – Again, the players appreciate it an awful lot. Now we won't be second field to many people. Well, Coach, we see them all. So <laughs> we can assure you this is as fine as one as we've yeah. seen. Yes, it is. it is. It is really gorgeous. And the fact that Howard's picture is all over it only makes it that much more so. so. <laughs> yes, exactly. You would be. Come on, you, had hair, you had hair you have in some question? of those pictures. I do have a question. Okay, well, let's move along. Is it about Howard having hair in photographs? Yeah, how did that, was that superimposed on there? Or how exactly? That was my question. Okay. Coach, how are you going to measure success for this program this year? Uh, I, I, you know, we understand the amount of games we've won the last three years. We've been building for this football team. It's hard to put a number on it. Just feel like, uh, you know, we've been playing with a, a smaller stick, a shorter stick for a lot of years around here. We're catching up. Just can't wait to play. It'll, you know, the season is, of course, a little over a week away, and um, we'll stop talking now, and uh, we'll show a better product, and we'll see. Before we let you go, I do want to ask you a huge tragedy in the offseason with Bobby Roundtree, uh, one of your players who uh, was lost due to a, a very severe injury. Can you update us on, on how Bobby's doing? Well, this is exactly that. It's a devastating injury. Bobby is, just, you know, the backbone of our football team. To lose a player like that, yeah, for our football team, but on a personal note, uh, it's tough. He's fighting just like he's done everything else, a long battle ahead. We're measuring success by, you know, inches each day, and that's what he's doing, making progress. 
Well, we wish him all the best. Coach Lovey Smith, thank thanks you. so much for your time. Really appreciate it.